In this video, we'll discuss ways to use 2D SDFs and 3D scenes. In the previous video, we discussed operators that work in two dimensions using Render 2D. But we can also use 2D SDFs to produce 3D surfaces using several types of conversion operators. We're starting with the standard ray marching setup with a ray march render 3D and a look at camera, which we've covered in previous sections. We'll start with extrusion. Extrusion creates 3D shapes by taking a 2D cross-section and pulling it along an axis. Open the palette using the Alt-R shortcut and create a star SDF 2D. If we try to connect this directly to the renderer, we'll get an error saying that it does not support 2D coordinates. Open the palette again and create an extrude. We're going to insert that between the star SDF and the renderer. Change the camera position to something like 135 to get a better view. And on the star SDF, we're going to increase that radius up to 1 to make it a bit easier to see. So note how the extrude is pulling that star shape forward along the Z axis and sort of creating a surface as it goes. On the extrude, you can use the height parameter to control how far it moves the shape along that axis. And you can use the offset to move the whole thing along that same axis. You can also change the axis using the setting here. And the infinite height option can make it continue forever along that axis. Next, we'll look at Revolve. Revolve creates 3D shapes by rotating a cross section around an axis. Open the palette and create a Revolve operator. And we're going to insert that in place of the extrude. Now, if you try to connect the extrude to the revolve, you'll get an error saying that it's expecting 2D coordinates for its input, but it's getting 3D ones. So going back to the star there, now see that it is kind of sweeping that shape around the axis. And you can use this radial offset to push it away from that center axis. And on the star, SDF can decrease that radius down to, say, 0.3 to get a better view. You can also use the axis offset to move it forward and back along the axis that it's rotating around. Next, we'll look at sweep. Sweep is similar to revolve and extrude in that it takes a cross section and moves it around to trace out a shape, but it uses a second cross-section shape to create that path. Create a sweep operator, and we're going to insert that in place of the revolve. Now we're going to get an error here because sweep expects a second input that it uses to define the path that it sweeps the shape along. Open the palette and create a rectangle SDF. And we're going to connect that to the second input on the sweep. So now you can see that it's taking that star and moving it around this rectangular path. And you can increase the scale or adjust the scale of the rectangle to change where that path goes. And then the star controls the shape that gets traced around that path. Next, we'll look at the Helix SDF operator. Open the palette and create a Helix SDF. And we're going to connect that to the renderer. On its own, this operator creates a 3D spiral shape that goes along an axis. Increase the radius to 1, 
and the spread to 0 0.5 to make things a bit easier to see. By default, Helix uses a circular cross-section, but we can replace that with our own 2D SDF. Connect the star SDF to the cross-section shape input on the Helix. You can now see that it is taking that star shape and swinging it along that spiral path. The spiral SDF has a similar cross-section feature. Open the palette again and create a spiral SDF. And we're going to connect that to the renderer. So spiral SDF, instead of spiraling along an axis, it goes around the axis on a plane. So connect the star SDF to the cross-section input on the spiral. And you'll see that similar to the helix, we get that cross section swept along the path to create the 3D shape. That's it for this section. Stay tuned for the next video in the series. Check out my Patreon for access to scene files, exclusive tutorials, and more. Thanks for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe.